We've got a brand new ITL for you. Steve B is with us. You know the place that we're talking about. It's Pensado's place. Hey. What's up, everybody? Glad to have you here. Um, with my wingman, Herb Trollick. Hey, David. How you doing, my friend? Goodness. We've got Steve B. with you uh, in the house today, and uh, along with his two sons. Stay tuned for Steve. Steve is uh, one of a handful of engineers whose technical skills I really respect. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to pick his brain about some stuff. And what's your week been like, Herb? My week has been pretty busy. A lot of Dave Pensado stuff and Pensado Play stuff and other stuff. But what I'm enjoying the most is Steve's kids are over that the audience can't see killing some video games or something. Oh, they're over there knocking it out. It's Will and who? Will and Justin? Jonah. Will and Jonah. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome. Right, shout out to their school. Anyway, so um, good week, busy week. Uh, as usual, we want to thank everybody for the comments and stuff. We got a ton of those and we're responding to those and they're ever growing and uh, obviously, we got our strategic partners in the house, Vintage King, yay, Vintage King. I think our man Drew Townsend it will be in the chat room. Uh, as always, our chat room is managed by not the DJ, but the CJ, Drew Adams. What's up, people? Drew. So, <laughs> <laughs> Drew's so, been taking improv I, lessons. <laughs> <laughs> he was so Al Pacino. I was a practice in front of the mirror <laughs> moment. <laughs> hey, hey, Will, give Drew another shout out. Give Drew another shot on the camera, let's, man. Let's do it. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> So as, so as you can see, uh, our classes with Drew are, are working. Um, let's do some of our homework. You know where to reach us. This page will pop up. And as you always do, there it is. The Facebook page is where we get all your comments and we talk back to you. Uh, obviously, you can Twitter us. We see you there, too. And uh, you can always catch the show at our YouTube channel, which is Pensado's Place and YouTube. So uh, good stuff this week, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. But before we do that... Very unique batter's Before box. we do that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, good batter's box? Uh -huh. Excellent. Cool, cool. I think Steve's going to be great. It's, it, it's philosophical. I'm going to ask uh, what Nietzsche thought about nihilism, and then we're doing a meaning of life question. <laughs> you know, real quick stuff. Do you, did, you include, to, did you include the debt ceiling conversation? The debt ceiling, don't yeah. <laughs> don't get him started, man. This dude is like the Matt Damon engineer. Oh, yeah, cool. Well, He's got I'm, a reputation on the Internet. Well, on this show, we more talk about the debt floor. <laughs> <laughs> the debt ceiling. One more thing. Let's get back to our Vintage King buddies. Hey, we've got our T-shirts being sent out to our winners. Who that. are David Brown, Tariq Adi, and Max Deering. So those T-shirts will be on I'm their sure way. I'm sure how Vanna White would do it. There we go. Yeah. There's there Vanna. Go. Vanna Dave. So, uh, uh, on to the good stuff. I think uh, based on our comments, folks want to see ITLs. Okay. Uh, ITL needs no setup. Um, we're continuing, you know, unique ways to use gates. Um, I, 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 I like these three su suggestions. I think you're going to find some use, use for them. Uh, Will, are we ready? Yep. Let's Rolling. do it. IT, I mean, uh, ITL. Now, another unorthodox use for a, uh, actually, I, I won't say it's unorthodox. Um, one of the guys that first taught me how to engineer, uh, Phil Benton, showed me this. I'd been engineering about an hour. Um, okay, here's my, here's my uh, kick drum. Here's without compression, a little, little compression, it's not even really moving the meter, but watch the attack on the gate. These, these factors aren't really coming into play. Uh, if you really want to, to, to get it to, to give you some snap, Okay. 
So that's kind of like a little cheap way to get some uh, attack on a, on, a, on a kick drum. Now, these two knobs, um, you know what, let me, let me explain something to you guys. On this one, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm not side-chaining anything. So this is just straight across the output of the kick drum. And you can, you can affect how the uh, kick drum is, is controlling the gate by rolling out some low end, rolling out some high end. And if you want to hear what you're doing, you can listen to the side chain on, with this key listen. Now, side chain and key are, are, are the same thing. And that's a little picture of the key. There's no key here. So um, I don't know why I'm showing it to you now, but better late than there. never. Okay, this one is kind of neat. I had uh, uh, had a clap that I thought was pretty good, but I just wanted it was just a little on the clean side for me. So um, this is my clap. Sounds a little bit like a kick, Dave. Well, I'm glad you're paying attention. Okay. Now, I wanted to add some dirt. So what I did was I took one of Colin's synthesizers over at McDSP, created a little dirty sound. gate behind it. Blammo, gone. Okay, now we're going to key the gate with bus 20. Bus 20 is being sent from here. I'm on pre. It's being sent from my clap. So now watch this. Here's without it. Let's add the scent. Here's just the sound being triggered. Uh, if I had more time, I could um, you know, make it a little darker. It's a little short, you know what? Let's make that a little longer. Anyway, you get the idea. We can change the length, you know, and make it anything we want. Um, you can, you can, you can take a radio, FM radio, and put it in between stations and gate that and add that back in. Um, okay, and like I said. These techniques don't 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 think that it has to be just a snare drum. It can be any number of things. Now I'm going to show you a vocal. Um, okay, I've got this vocal, and let me get a little bit of reverb on the vocal. Okay. Smashing bottles on a dance room floor. I spot this model I've been searching for. Smashing bottles on a dance room floor. I spot this model I've been searching for. Okay. Sp okay, there's the reverb. Now, what I'm doing, follow me now. I'm, I'm, I'm taking, this is sending to my reverb. This bus, I'm sending to bus 22. Now, bus 22 is controlling this gate, which is slapped across the output of the reverb. So 
the, the information on bus 22 tells this gate when to open and close. That information is the vocal itself. So the, the, the reverb is being sent the entire vocal and, it, and it's creating a reverb. Now, when the vocal's not playing, the, the gate's going to close so you don't hear that tail. I'm mean, going to show you, you, you heard it without, without the gate being on. Smashing bottles on a dance room floor. I spot this model I've been searching for. Okay, now watch what happens. We're going to take the gate. This, this gate is across the reverb return. It's being controlled by the vocal itself. Bus 22, watch this. Smashing bottles on a dance room floor. I spot this model I've been searching for. See, the, the, you, you don't hear the reverb in, in the holes where the vocals stop. So you can, you can pump the reverb a little bit and, uh, and not hear it because your ear listens for the holes. It doesn't listen for the reverb. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to... Smashing bottles on a dance room floor. I spot this model I've been searching for. I love that. Now I'm going I'm to exaggerate it. Smashing bottles on a dance room floor. I spot this model I've been searching for. That sound in time, Drew? Okay. Let me, um, let me take the vocal out and so you can hear exactly what the reverb is doing. You can control it. Now I want a little bit of reverb on it, so I, I, I take my range and leave it up here, or you can just make it real stark. I spot this model I've been searching for. Smashing. So remember, uh, you guys that are real familiar with with uh, with gates, you can go ahead and move on to the next thing. But you guys are just kind of learning. The key in the side chain are, are, are synonymous terms, essentially the way we're using them. And so you can take and control the gate with something other than the original source material that you put the gate on. So you, you don't have to be dependent on what you put the gate on. You can put the gate on a reverb and have a vocal control that. You can have a hi-hat control the reverb on a vocal. You can, you can do any number of things. You can take a pad and you can have a hi-hat control that. You can uh, have a guitar part and have, a, have the vocal control the guitar part so that when the vocal's playing, um, it's called ducking. It's, it's a reverse of gating. When the, when the vocal's playing, the guitar will automatically come down and rise back up when the vocal's um, not, not going on. Uh, it's the reverse of gating. It's, uh, I guess you'd call it expanding in a way. But um, we call that ducking. So there's any number of things you can use gates for. They're great little timing things because a lot of times I'll take the original bass line and I'll let that be controlled by, I'll put a gate across the original bass line and let a kick drum control that. And I don't turn the range all the way down so that the bass, the sustain of the bass, but, but if, if, if the bass and the kick are real compatible, it's the opposite of side chaining. It gives you just a real fat, nice kick drum sound. Okay, guys, hope you learned something. Let me know what you think, and if we need to expand on anything, we will. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I, 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 I like unique ways to use things. I like to try and a lot of mixing is problem solving and, and that's, just, that's just a lot of fun. But uh, Herb, you said you had something you wanted to deal, deal with? Well, you know, we have Ooh. our Pro Tools 9 giveaway and we'll do that at the end of the show. Stay tuned. We've got a winner and we're going to tell you where you can enter to get the next one so stay tuned we'll get to that toward the end you want to uh yes you had something you want to get off your chest yeah you know um uh first of all i can't remember his whole name his first name was ollie great great message i appreciate you sending that ollie and then um yesterday and today i was talking to some guys uh, via facebook 
and um, we were talking about how long it takes to do a mix. And I just wanted to kind of make sure that I, I clarified for you guys. Um, like I said, uh, you might have thought I was being a smart ass, but I'm not sure I've ever finished a mix. You know, you just the way you know you're done with a mix is when they're screaming at mastering for you to send it. You're done. I have a couple of clients of ours who said that to me this morning. Is Dave finished? No, I'm just <laughs> I never finish. In fact, uh, like I told you a long time ago on one of the earlier episodes, I, sometimes I just go back in and redo a mix that's on the radio right now, just because I, I, I've. I've got something new to do but um, just a quick clarification um, there's really no no time limit you guys just just work until you're happy with it and uh, they're all different and uh, just remember you know like if you've got a six minute song and you listen to to ten tracks um, you know that's going to take a lot longer than if you got a, a Ramones two and a half minute song but one of the, one of the elements that you have to deal with and our audience would have to deal with is what the client wants. So if the client has three days to get a song done, you have to try to adhere to that, don't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't try to make it go three days if it doesn't need it. But, right, right. Um, but you just don't always have the luxury of taking as much time as you want, depending yeah. on what the relationship is. Well, like is. the Jill Scott record that, that I just finished, um, the tracks that, that, that I got were so well done. Um, those were fairly quick mixes for me, but but uh, J.R. Hutton did the uh, Hutton Hudson did the the production and the tracks were so well done. Um, that, you know, there, there was a lot less for me to do. Mm -hmm. It felt like I was mixing a rock thing. You know, the rock tracks usually tend to be really well done. So, Herb. Yes. Steve B. in the house today. Absolutely. I can't believe I said in the house, Drew. Um, next time I do that, you. bitch slap me, Drew. It's very 90s of you, Dave. But uh, you guys, one of the things I'm, I'm excited about having Steve on the show for is because we've had a great collection of technical guys. We've had a great collection of feel and emotion guys for you to listen to. We've had a great collection of both. But Steve is, 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 is a, a mixer that I respect and get scared when I know we're going to be on the same record together because he's got a really good sense of formal training, non-formal training, working from his heart, working from his head. He's, he's just got it all. So we're going to pick his brain. I hope uh, you've taken a few seconds to Google him up because Steve has done some just iconic records. Uh, he just finished up Game's new album and um, it's safe to say most of the hits that Game's had Steve has done over, the, over Game's career. Same thing 50 Cent, he did most of those. Um, a song I love his mix on, uh, Don't Ya, Pussycat Dolls. How's that chorus go, Herb? I would not do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I started to do it. I said, hey, 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 you know, there you go. I was like, no, let me. Uh, and I did it anyway. So. You did it anyway, but you weren't on camera. Anyway. I was. Um, you know how I know? I, I looked at my monitor. Exactly. And I did it on purpose so that you were on camera and I wasn't. <laughs> And then I never can say say this correctly. So uh, Talib Kweli, uh, he, he did the new Reflections album or the Reflections album, and then uh, won a Grammy for Eminem. He's done a lot of lot of work with Eminem. Um, one of the things I want to pick Steve's brain about is uh, when Steve used to work with Dr. Dre a lot. Dre trusted Steve to to be very involved in the development of, some, of new acts, and 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 so Steve got to where not just an engineering hat, but he got to wear the hat that, that got him pretty close to Dre, so I don't want to make this about Dre, but I do have maybe one Dre question. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, Steve Boffman. Yay! Steve B. Yay! And his, and his boys. And okay, boys. boys. <laughs> boys man. Let's try that again. You ready? Okay, Steve B. Hey! Hey! Uh, <laughs> like that Dad. <laughs> we live with him. Good Steve. news. Let's jump right into this, man. Um, first, thanks for coming. I, I, I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah, and I have a, a, a like like a lot of my friends on the show. You and I have a long history. It's not quite right to call you my my assistant. Uh, I think uh, half the time very, I was very right to call you. No, <laughs> half, half the time I was assisting you. Uh, back then, Herb, I hated uh, I hated EQ and strings and roads. So tell the story, Steve. Dave uh, always uh, would be like, hey, I'm going to go uh, 
take a quick little stretch. Why don't you go ahead and <laughs> take care of these uh, strings and rows for me? Make the strings sound like synths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what can I say? Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why back then I just, I just didn't, I didn't feel like I had a handle on what they should sound like, and I, and I, and every time I would EQ them and put them in the mix, I'm like, I just get that panic attack that I know all you guys get because you write me and tell me about it, uh, and so I figured if Steve did it because Steve had a classical background and very formal training in music, I figured he he must know what strings should sound like. Uh, but I did give you credit every time somebody somebody came in and said, man, those strings yeah. sound great. I said, well, I didn't do them. Steve did them. <laughs> hey, man, um, I don't want to make this about Dre, but um, I've always been curious about some of his methods. And, and uh, obviously, you know, the engineer code, you can't give a lot away. But um, he's as creative as we think he is, right? I mean, he's yeah. pretty incredible. I know. And, I mean... I've been very blessed in my career to be working with just super talented people like yourself and right. and uh, other great engineers. But I'd say the, the number one person I learned engineering from uh, on, in hip hop was Dre. And people don't almost realize that his, and at least in my opinion, his one of his number one talents is mixing. And you know, right. especially back when we were using the SSL board heavily, he still uses it. But when we were, you know, that was the sound. Um, he knew how to use that as an instrument. Uh, almost like nobody else I ever worked with. Is it true? Wow. Like, like he he actually he actually did a lot of chronic at Larrabee, where where I worked a lot. Studio B, yeah. And uh, um, I heard that he didn't <clears throat> he didn't turn the automation on. That a lot of the chronic was just done mixing on the fly with no automation. Yeah. Is that yeah, true? The, uh, well, <clears throat> there was automation. You know, in the end, there was we did the master fader and a couple other things. But for the most part, you know. Um, you know, besides out of vocals, you know, hip hop is, you know, uh, sounds that are static, you know, and it's supposed to be punchy and it's supposed to be in your face. Hypnotic. And hypnotic that way. And so uh, if you start fluctuating with the moves too much on that type of music, you, uh, you end up getting a softer sound than you, when, you know, than you don't want. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. I wish you'd told me that 20 years ago, Steve. I'm over here moving faders, Drew, and I'm really now he tells me. <laughs> hey, man, while, while while we've got you, and and everybody knows you're low end. Everybody, I I think that you're incredible from 20 to 20k. But oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> like when you when you, I get this question a lot, and and this can this will pertain to the rockers. It'll, this pertains to everybody. The I mean, if you're a folk singer with an 808, this pertains to you. But when, how do you manipulate and and allow and find a way to get 808s to exist uh, alongside a, a, a subby bass and perhaps a, a, another kick drum that's got some 60, 80 in it? Mm -hmm. What's your What's your thought process first, as opposed to your technique? What's your How do you How do you think about that? My thought process usually starts with space. I realize there's only so much space that's going to be allowed in this mix, so um, listen to what they've been listening to, and you know, and like, all right, what's important to them? If that 808 is distorted to be on beyond belief and is trying to grab as much space as it wants, obviously they thought that 808 was important. Now my job you is to discern that from the rough. Right, I discern that from the rough. So now it's obvious that all right, look, they really want to get this 808, and they want that to be the boombastic. So now I'm I'm kind of building around that. You know, how do I? How do I uh, create uh, enough space for the kick to, to poke out on top of that? Um, a lot of times on the kick, a lot of people forget to do is re-add the transients to it. You know, um, it's not all about that low end on that kick drum. Mm -hmm. It's also about hearing it and realizing it's punching through. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that because the transients are what really allow you to find it in a mix. Yeah, I mean, obviously our, our rock friends are. You know, I, I did. I had Especially to metal. Yeah, they, the exactly. Metal had like a lot of tick in there. So. Yeah, I had the pleasure of doing a um, filter show, a live filter show the other night. I mixed it um, down in Anaheim at the Grove, and it was for their uh, a live um, uh, show album that they were doing. It's the first one they've ever done. But they live run 808s with the bass player who's playing bass um, and with a distorted pedal. And that, so that low end's all in there and that distortion. And then, of course, the, the drummer's there with the kick drum. So Adding the adding that tick on the the kick drum, um, and still keeping the full bodiness of it, um, allowing the distortion uh, in that bass 
to push you know the the drive of that bass, but also allowing the the low end di sub kind of rounded out at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then letting the 808 have its presence with the you know it, um, kind of let on that mix really help me out. A, a, a lot of times, do you find uh, I know the answer to this question before I'm asking it, but I want I want the audience to hear your opinion on this. Sometimes, when you want to hear more more 808, the best thing to do is just turn it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, how often do we do that and people compliment us and all we did was turn the, turn it yeah. louder? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the biggest mistake is people immediately want to compress it, uh, EQ it, which a lot of times um, these days, you know, you're getting such quality samples and such good, you know, Excellent good point. sound, good sounding um, uh, material that now if I'm adding um, 60 hertz to a, a low end that's already there, I'm just really distorting that 60 hertz and now I'm getting this kind of fuzzy 808 instead of the punchy, cool 808 that was there a minute ago. So you're absolutely right. I would say, Plus, you know, if sometimes you're, if you're, push if up you're, fader. If, you're, if, you, if your meters are banging zero and you add 60 hertz, now you're banging plus two. You've just lowered your whole mix plus two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I always, when I'm mixing, uh, I always set up two master trim. I call them trims. So uh, I do all the music, and I do a group, and I do a master trim on those so, so, uh, gr as, a, as a group. And so that way I can go either with the, if I'm doing automation in there, you have to go with a crop tool on the volume and mm -hmm. take it all down a little bit so that you're not peaking out your, your stereo bus. You know, I do the same thing with the vocals. You know, if I'm subgrouping the vocals to um, aux channels, I just have the aux channels in, that, the, my, in my trim group. And so now I can trim down the, the music and the vocals equally. I'm not slamming the stereo bus. I'm giving myself that headroom again that I need to EQ stuff to, you know, uh, get all that stuff going. Mm -hmm. And a, 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 there's been discussion on the internet a lot lately about the difference between rock mixers and, and hip-hop mixers. Taste is taste. When I listen to uh, Queens of the Stone Age, what was the song? Mm -hmm. The vocal is dry and in your face and it reminded me of of the way you treat some of your vocals on with 50 and with game, um, have you listened to that song? Did yeah, you, did you, yeah. I'm did a, I'm did a it big, strike you how much uh, yeah. that vocal sound was like was a, done on the, yeah, exactly. on the R and B hip hop side? I'm a big I'm a big fan of that upfront vocal sound. Well, you and, do it and, really well. And I, I I I usually end up using push limiters to get it to get it up there. Mm. You know, so. Uh, I, I, there's, there's some people that don't know what a push limiter is. Uh, you know, it, it's basically like a, a limiter on steroids. It's you know, it's taking it and just really shoving like an any L2, like an L2, almost like an L2. Our our Vox is kind of like a push limiter. You know, our um, Vox is really good, which is really great. So a lot of times, what I'll have in my chain will be, um, I come in, I DS the vocal first, then I'll compress it slightly with a um, an easy four to four to one ratio type compression. Um, then after that, I'll EQ it. Then after that, I'll throw the push limiter on it to, to push it back out. I, I DS first. Why do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Because I think you want to uh, you want to e you don't want to EQ into your DSer. If you right. EQ into your DSer, now you're pushing the DSer harder. Mm -hmm. It's only going to make your guy sound gayer and gayer. Well, mm -hmm. sorry, if you, I don't mean to be uh, politically incorrect or anything, but it's gonna get, you're going to give somebody a, a you, lift. You politically I, incorrect? I, I, yeah, well. <laughs> Mr. Liberal, before yeah, exactly. you send your cards and letters in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> check how much he donated to GLAD last year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, in fact, that's a, that's a good lesson. Uh, sometimes you want to EQ into a compressor. Sometimes you want to EQ the output of the compressor. Right. Like, for example, if I'm a lot of times on my stereo bus, I like to EQ after the compressor a mm -hmm. little bit, unless I'm EQing low end. Right. But sometimes and sometimes you don't. So, so what Steve is saying is, what Steve just said. I don't need to repeat that. <laughs> um, Herb, you had a question for Steve. I'm always interested in how your background, in terms of you know your dreams and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and how that influenced it, and then combine that with how your personal taste in music. Right. affects your mixes. So history first and then taste history first. Uh, I came up as a classical uh, player. Mm. I was a trumpet player when I was a kid. Mm. And um, I played in orchestras in Sacramento. Um, and then I, I wasn't, I, I, in my opinion, I wasn't good enough to make it to that next level in that. But I always loved music and wanted to figure out. So I, was, I found a program up in uh, California State University at Chico. 
that had a uh, engineering program. Like, oh, this will be great. I'll learn about production. I'll learn about recording. I'll learn about that art. And so I went up there um, immediately when I came down to. Was that helpful? It was actually. Let me tell you what. It wasn't nearly as helpful as what was about what was about to happen next. But what it was, it, it got it, you that it got door me, open. It got me that door open, and also gave me that foundation of, oh, this is what they're talking about, mm -hmm. and it gave me a, a set of terms and you know, you know, a communication skills that I was able to like understand what people were talking about mm -hmm. and what the signal flow mm -hmm. meant and what this was, you know, and all these little terms that we all use mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So it gave me that base, right? Um, did I come out of when college? Great. No. Yeah. Sorry. When I first met him, he was just walking around humming "The Lonely Bull" by Herb Alpert. <laughs> good exactly. Taste. exactly. Yeah. So then, so you come down here, and then what was the next step? And then how does your taste? The next happen? step, which is this, is the hardest step that I have for kids these days, because they don't have this step almost anymore. Yeah. I was able to get a job at a major studio. Man, it's missing. It's missing, it's and missing. it's it's a sad thing because that was a at Larrabee where I met Dave. Um, and uh, so when I came to Larrabee at, at, in 95, um, you know, fortunately for me, because of my background, because of what I had actually just got done learning, they didn't have a ton of guys that were already caught up to s speed. Mm -hmm. So I was able to be thrown into uh, recording sessions, you know, if Dave needed some vocals done, mm -hmm. hey, Steve can do it for you. Mm -hmm. Great. You know, so I got my feet wet a lot with uh, just having, but what I was about to say was from... Chico mm -hmm. got that foundation. Where I really learned everything was working underneath guys like Dave. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just name a bunch of Daves here: Dave Way, Dave sure. Bianco. Sure. Uh, right. You know. Um, I just talked to Dave Way yesterday. Yeah, great, incredible. Uh, just incredible, incredible mixers. Um, you know, then uh, eventually got in with Dr. Dre, mm. and uh, watching him mix was a whole new world for me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, I was a Northern California white boy who uh, listened to rock and roll and listened to. You know, I think I had two. Uh, by the time I came down to LA, I probably had two hip hop records mm -hmm. in my, my, you know, I had the NWA and I had um, what was Luke's um, uh, Nasty as You Want to Be. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that was my that was probably the extent of my uh, my hip. Well, I had some Beastie Boys, but that was the kind of the extent of my hip hop knowledge. And um, but that that can inform your mix. Don't you yeah. find that as an asset? Well, it was great. Well, in, the nice thing was I, was I was kind of a fresh slate. Right. You know, I came into this thing kind of like wide open and learning and. You know, uh, but there was no slate back then. I mean, what was kind of neat was was there was no slate. Every, yeah, yeah. And back then in hip hop, you never heard the sentence, "You can't do that. This is a hip hop record." Right. It was like whatever you can think of, it belongs. Hip hop was was just yeah, yeah. It was in its infancy, and it was just it was, it was, it was just yeah, exactly. so much fun to contribute to that world because it was there was. You could play rock guitars, you could play congas, violins, yeah. accordions, I whatever sat, you I, want. I sat there one day and the producer said, hey, just plug in the TV into the back of the MPC. I'm just going to surf the channels. And he'd surf the channels and sample a little bit here, oh, sample wow. a little there, sample wow. a little. Next thing you know, I had a, there was a hip-hop song done, oh, oh, and it was wow. all from samples that he did from wow. surfing television. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right. That's fantastic. Steve, I'm going to change the subject on you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Monitoring, like you've got a, you've got a pretty good project studio. Yours is yeah. world class, uh, but there's a lot of guys sitting home in a bedroom, <coughs> and uh, um, you use the what was the number of the model Yamahas you used? I used the, the uh, yeah the MS50s, the powered Yamahas. They kind of they kind of look like the Deceptive. They look like NS10s, and everybody's like, oh, they must sound exactly like NS10s. They don't really sound like NS10s, but what they do like NS10s. It's easy to get familiar with them, um, and almost anywhere I take them, you have what you put into them is what you get out of them. So you, you leave the room. Do you like them? Yeah, at least for me, you know, maybe it's just my ear is attuned to them. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I enjoy them. They don't overhype the low end. They're not giving you a false sense of greatness on the high end. You know, there's I don't want to call out a certain some some speakers, <laughs> but you know, I'm not a big I'm not the huge. Well, at least I wasn't at the very beginning a huge fan of the Genelex mm -hmm. because they were just so pretty on the top end and so uh, I had and I this is I won't name the name, but I had a great story about this. An engineer came in and he switched from NS10s to uh, Genelex, and I said, "Well, hey, notice you switched to Genelex. Why did you do this?" And he's like, "Well." Steve, let me tell you a story. <laughs> I was sitting there and I was working on the SSLs, Willie really twisting those knobs and turning those knobs to try to make those stupid NS10 sound great. He's like, now I put up the, uh, uh, you know, these uh, Genelex, put up the faders, the mix sounds great. It's awesome. 
<laughs> and he didn't see the inherent he problem. Hasn't been since then. <laughs> yeah, like, he didn't see the inherent problem with his logic. I was, I was wondering like, why you name withheld by request. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah, that was a, I was like, oh. Kind of the opposite of what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was like, okay. Back then, we were getting paid by the DB of EQ, right? So exactly. You didn't make much money. No, no, yeah, exactly. I'm like, less, yeah. less turning a knob, less money you make. Exactly. <laughs> and um, um, when you're monitoring, what is it that you're listening for? Are you listening, like, like, uh, like, say, let's say, for example, not when, when you're blending, not, not, it's not, we're not EQing. We've already got things EQ'd and kind of where we want them. Right. And then now you're starting to construct the mix, the mix part of mixing. Right. What, what is it that, like, um, you like your vocals kind of up front. You like, mm -hmm. but not too loud. And, but your vocals sit just in a beautiful spot. I hear the I hear the track behind them, so I feel the groove. Right. Um, it's not it's it's not pop level, but yet it feels like it's pop level. What 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 do you, what what? How do you try to construct your mix? It's, yeah, I mean I'm a big person about space, and then, interestingly enough, I'm I'm, I'm almost the I mean I'm not sure maybe we have a different approach, but I, I come from mixing is 99% levels, so I always, first thing I do is just level, I get my mix constructed first, and then I, I kind of think of it as whittling. Mm -hmm. I whittle away with EQ. So right. if I need to whittle away a little bit of, you know, that, 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 um, that vocal is boxy, it has too much in the, the 500 to 300 area, now I'm going to take an EQ, go in there, and dip that but out. But you can't tell what it needs till you hear it in the mix. Right. right, yeah. Until yeah. I have, yeah. until I have what I have there blended, and so like you know, I'm yeah. you know I, I kind of I kind of work at the macro, right? Get the macro mix done, which mm -hmm. is a, a quick process, you know, a fairly quick process, mm -hmm. and then I, then I, and then from there the twenty the, minutes. Yeah, exactly, games. exactly. From there, really, the faders move very little after that process, and it's all now I'm back to EQing, compressing. Um, do you to, reference to, the uh, rough mix at any point? Of that I do, time? I do, because you know I. Especially in hip hop, um, what people fell in love with is that two track that the producer did, and what created that song. Because in hip hop, the two track is created, and you know, or the the instrumental is created, and then the artist writes to it. So uh, the artist fell in love with something in there, whether it's the sample, the way the snare. You know, you, you got to figure out what it was that gave that emotion to that um, uh, artist, and make sure you don't hey screw it up <laughs> and and take it out of there um, and be just enhance it. I like to say I'm just making a bigger version of what you already got me, you know. Um, and a lot of times I'm cleaning it up a little bit because some of these guys, you know, you get in there and the gain structure's not quite right. They're hitting their stereo bus too hard or something. And so it just ends up because they're trying. Everybody's in this competition is for loudness, and there's a way to get things loud without distorting and being. Well, you know, in digital crunched. zero zero ain't nothing after it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh man, I had a great question and I forgot it. What was well, it, Herb? Okay, um, good. Because you, you mentioned earlier that you just mixed a, a filter record, did live mm -hmm. mixing. Different art forms, do they inform each other? Something that you love and, and does going outside the genre of hip hop and so on and so forth also fill a space for you to be able to do oh, that? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I love, I mean, I've got, I have a management company, um, allstarmusic.net. Mm -hmm. um, we got country artists. I got. A, I just signed a new fifteen-year-old. Uh, we just signed a new fifteen-year-old girl. Website last night. What, what was the website? It's allmusicgroup.net. Uh, We're actually the the website's down right now for uh, up, updating, so mm -hmm. it should be up in the next couple of days. But um, you know, we got a you know we got country girls. We got uh, pop. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a, a urban um, an urban producer, um, but he's also you know a great pop producer. And then we have uh, another. An, uh, another pop producer. So I got Dirk Pate, who's a, just an amazing producer, who's mm -hmm. one of our signs. And then we have um, uh, Brian Todd, who is a, uh, a fantastic. He's known in the Disney world for doing Disney pop. You know, mm -hmm. so we got a, we got a nice array. So as a, to answer your question, I love getting outside of hip hop. I'm mixing a, a big band album oh, cool. currently right now. Like so, I'm sitting there with. Uh, 24 horns mm -hmm. and you know <laughs> a drum set, stand up bass. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's kind of fun, you know, to always, I think, push yourself outside of your own realm. And, and then the live, and live mixing. And live, yeah. Other. Well, that live thing. That is the, it, when you do that, is it weird referencing records by all the people on the record are already dead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
once you uh, uh, to, to 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 wind this down, once you uh, once you make the records, once you sign all these artists, there's a business to what we do, and Ed yeah. Cherney brought that out, and I I I, I know you, of course, and so. I, I have a great respect for what you've done on the business side. Do you find that comfortable? Like, Herb does everything for me. I mean, I, right. I, I, I couldn't exist without that help. I'm, I'm not a very good businessman. Right. Uh, but you are. Is that something you enjoy? And how does that relate to? Um, yeah. Help me with a question, Herb. That's more your territory. Well, I, let me just paraphrase what you're saying, and then we'll get to some corner office questions. Mm -hmm. um, I've always believed with this show that the best prepared people ought to have the roundest vision. Mm -hmm. You can't just be in a box. And sometimes, you know, we'll get comments where people want longer ITLs, they want other kinds of things. Right. And periodically, we want to make sure that that context about how you're operating, because I still think that, you know, the, the joy of being able to do what you do and also make a living at doing what you do right. is, is a place to go. And you can't be uninformed and do it. Right, right. right. So no, you, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, let me throw some in. Also, nowadays, not only that, you've got to have a, a vision of the future. Well, and the vision's changing. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, as a, as a businessman, let me just ask the question. Then, in an environment that's changing, mm -hmm. you being a businessman must help your mixing mm -hmm. and also help you inter interrelating with clients yeah. and then also help to know what you want to provide for your clients. Is I 100% agree. And then, you know, recently, I, I, I've been going into more on mixes. I've been going into more partnerships. Yeah. Um, um, I'm, you know, instead of my fee, I'm getting a small percentage of the publishing mm -hmm. on some of these on some of these um, songs, and uh, you know, the idea is like they want the greatest product that they can put out, and they know that they're missing a, a, a key element of that. I can provide that element, so I come in as a partner, uh, as a you know, a production partner. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so I, I've I've got a number of producers that I'm doing that with, mm -hmm. and so you know, I'm waiving my fee up front and saying you know, or reducing it. Drastically, yeah. and um, saying, "Yeah, no, no. Look, let's go. I, I believe in what you're doing. I like what you're doing. Let me get in there with you, and let me let's let's make this happen." Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing some of that too. Yeah. I, I like that, Steve. That's that's great. Yeah, because you know, it, there's so many great artists out there. I, I, I saw some st statistic the other day where more music is being listened to now than ever before in the history of the world, mm -hmm. and um, it. and it's 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 hard to, for us who's Kind of in, embedded in that um, that system of of you know the big the big the big companies mm -hmm. to see outside of that you know because we're every day you know like we're being inundated by the big company to do this then when I start seeing this whole industry that's being created outside of them I really kind of realize well that's bigger than actually the big the big labels no no so question. you know I rather I rather make sure that I'm taking part of what's going on over here and this advancement over here and not putting all my eggs into just this one I basket. I tell people all the time, adapt or die. Yeah, definitely. We're in the middle of an industrial revolution. It's a digital revolution. Mm -hmm. And if you don't adapt to it, you're, you're going to lose your way. Right. Um, and it's why we always try to do a mixture of things. We, we try not to be, you know, some people just want technical stuff all the time, right. which is cool, but you have to know what to do with it. <laughs> uh, right. Um, so we got a couple other things to do, which is, Drew, we got some good stuff over in the corner do, office? We do, we do. I got a couple questions myself, So actually. let's uh, go to that. We'll run our little corner office graphic, and Drew, fire up some questions, then we'll go to Batters Box. All right, uh, for everybody at the table, from Abbasala V. Sorry if I said that wrong, I probably, probably did. did. You uh, did say that. <laughs> we apologize. We apologize. For, uh, for people like me uh, who are far away from L.A. and trying to basically network online, how would Dave, Steve, and Herb suggest we move forward in getting projects? Say that again. That, that was kind of vague. It was... It was I think I think uh, you know the great answer to that is uh, social media. Obviously, I mean, obviously oh, okay, our okay. Twitter accounts are, you know, it, don't don't irritate the guy. Don't barrage people with you know something every day, every week. You know, once a month, check in and say, hey, you know, Stevie, I was checking in. I saw you did this. Loved it. Can, can I ask you a quick question, Dave? I, you know, and we we all you know the occasionally. I'm not. We we all get kind of hit up by quite a few people. Quite, quite a. Few. a quite a bit of the time and we can't answer everybody and I feel bad that I can't I, w I would love to but I have no problem hey once a month checking in I got a couple people overseas that 
hit me up every once, you know, like, hey, I like you know, that, I, yeah. I'm like, and it, the, for me it's fun because now <laughs> I know I'm talking, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to someone either in, uh, you know, South Africa or in, you know, in Sweden or in somewhere like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not usually talking to these folks, so it's See, nice to have them. It's the, I call it the, I want to hear from you, I call it the two E's. It's etiquette and expectations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just observe some etiquette, manage your expectations. I mean, the, one of the great things about the show is we're we're in 30 some odd, mm -hmm. we get comments from 30 some odd countries. Right. And it continues to grow. Right. And it's fascinating because of the passion and stuff, but in trying to get to it all, particularly for him, you know, it can, it can right. overwhelm it's, it's you. So you yeah, just yeah. have to find that balance. Definitely. What are you gonna say, Dave? Um, I, I love to share, and I love it when I get an email where somebody says, man, I just found this new plugin, you know, it does this, it does that, and what do you think, Dave? I like it, I like when I get those sharing kind of emails, too. One more question, Drew. Uh, yeah, okay, from Lowick Wall, uh, one question I was wondering for Dave is, what is your favorite kind of music to mix, and does this correlate with the music you like personally? Yeah, my favorite kind of music to mix is really good music, and that's <laughs> what I tend to like to listen to. Me too. Um, right. You know, when you do what we do for a living, guys, um, that's like asking a chef what's his favorite vegetable. Uh, food's food. Um, I pride myself, as does most of the people we've had on the show, including Steve, that, that, that we've learned to mix emotion and feeling and vibe, and those are universal things. A kick drum might change here, a violin might change there, but, but what we all get from music is a feeling. We get something emotional. We get three and a half minutes of relief from the debt crisis, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> and, and so when you mix that, that's a universal thing. But uh, I, I, if, if you talk to anybody that knows me, I listen to a lot of music, and I listen to a lot of variety. How's your uh, pictures arm? It's, it's pretty, good. Is it good? good? Oh, we got. How's your I bat? Got heat today. We're talking 100 miles an is hour your, fastball. Guys, is your dad a pretty good athlete? Yeah. They went. Yeah. They went. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, as long as you can sit at the table and knock some out the park. Exactly. So let's get ready for uh, batter's box. Okay, and, uh, Steve. I got. Uh, I got a. Uh, I got a new batter's box for you, because I have such, so much respect for your technical skills. Instead of having you give me your go-to plug-in or, or piece of gear for a particular track, we're going to do frequencies. Okay. So what's your go-to go-to for sub? For sub, R bass or Poltec for EQ? Um, that 200 range in, in the bass. 200 range in the bass, I'm probably going to hit the focus right red. Cool. Uh, 10K high end, more or less a vocal. Um, once again, focus right red, or if I'm going more pristine, I might hit the Oxford um, EQ. Oh, okay. Um, if you're trying to take 2K out, what is your go-to piece of, piece of equipment or plug-in? Um, might hit the waves on that one and just grab, and subtra subtracting with the waves, yeah. Waves EQ. The, the, the Q series? The Q series, yep. Okay. I was hoping you'd say my uh, C1SC technique. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, when you need to per perform surgery on the low end, when you've got a bass and a bunch of different things occupying the same space, what's your go-to? Because you can't do that with a pull tech. What was your go-to for that? Um, low end surgery. Low end surgery. Um, once again, the focus right red, but also I'm, I'll probably pull out a, a, a channel strip or or some other EQ just to help the uh, other ones go. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, knock, as in kick drum knock. Kick drum knock. Um, my old favorite is the uh, the 550A. And so you can... Yeah, can't beat it. Yeah, it's hard. To, and, and, and the real one out in the waves is pretty the good. The wave ones is pretty good. So pretty yeah. Good. I, I, okay, um, this is a frequency related question. Your, your go-to DSer. Um, you know, I'm an RDSer guy, and uh, I'll use it either on the shelf or the um, bell, and depending on the vocal. And then a D-mudder. A D-mudder. Um, Something that takes the mud, mud out, out of right out of the mix more than the sound. Um, or it can be a sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the multi-maxer for the overall mix, I'll, I'll use that a lot. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't use that much. Yeah. Uh, now, switching to the stereo bus, clarity. What do you go to for clarity? Clarity, um... Whatever the heck that means. Yeah. Means old different. school was 
GML, Avalon. Uh, new school, once again, um, I'm back to the, uh, the multi-maxer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, GML 8200, 8, Avalon 2055. 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah. Okay. Uh, enhance the low end on the stereo bus. That one's a hard one. Um, enhance the low end on the stereo bus. <laughs> ah, strike. <laughs> you want to. <laughs> I'm like, no. Uh, I, I, I know you know it. Uh, there, people don't realize it, but there are right and wrong answers. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll let you redeem yourself. What about high end? High end. Uh, funny thing is, I I used to love uh, using the Manly EQ. I mean, Manly uh, compressor for the high. It actually added some sort of sparkle and are you pretty. Serious? Yeah. The the variable mu one. The variable mu. You'd add it. You'd all of a sudden 10 10 k to 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 20 just kind of magically. I used to use that. Maybe that's why. Yeah, it was it was it, it was a pretty box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to redeem yourself on the low end? Just make something up. Make something up. Uh, oh God, I can't even think of anything I like for just low end overall. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously the pull tech was you know. Yeah, throw, him a, throw him an easy last pitch. He's knocking him out of the park anyway, so. I, I ran out. That's oh, it. That was well, it. That was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good job, oh, man. Yeah. Kind of hey, Drew, did you like that, that with frequency? That was good. Yeah, we should keep doing that. <laughs> Today or? I mean, whoever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Get some other guy Steve, in Steve, uh, was... Um, you, you, uh, you know, like... I don't, I don't have an adjective for it, but help me here. You know, the part of our profession that's actually EQing and surgery and all that, mm -hmm. is that something you enjoy? I mean, you, you gave great answers. I, I do. I enjoy, I like looking at when I get the, the project itself, is that almost like a, a puzzle mm -hmm. and uh, a sonic puzzle. And I like seeing where everything fits together. And I do enjoy realizing that things fit together in a certain way for a certain reason. Mm -hmm. And if I clear something out here, it allows something there to be more present. If I add something here, it could mask something over here. So let's figure out something for over there. You know, and it's yeah, it, it's just little. Tail. Yeah, you're chasing your tail sometimes. But it's uh, knowing that it does fit together sonically as a puzzle, and it will um, is is kind of the fun part of what mixing is, right? Yeah, it's just one of the elements I enjoy. Here's the biggest question of the day. All right. Will you come back? Oh, for sure. Well, for sure. I would love yeah. to. Thank it's a you, great man. time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Steve. Thank My you. man. Yes. Steve B., Steve Bachman. Um, what's the website that folks should go to when it's time? Um, when yeah, it's, it's back up? Yes, it's allmusicgroup.net. So, folks, get to it. Check it out. See oh, what sorry. All Star. All Star Music Group. All and it'll be up in a couple of days. So, um, nothing like supporting our guests for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Who Did you guys, who won? Well, somebody's still playing. He's still playing. <laughs> right, cool. You got to see this. The, his, his boys are just, just great. Um, very quickly, let's announce our avid winner, Pro Tools 9. Hey, hey, hey. You know who that guy is? Do you want to announce it? Or do you want me to announce it? You do it. Okay, I'll do it. His oh. name is? Oh, Jack Allen Smith. He, he, Dave just announced it. <laughs> Swooped in. Incredible. I knew staying that extra day in third grade would pay I'm off. I'm telling you, man. Jack Allen Smith, there he is. Like you is. see his page up there. Well, he is the winner. And, uh, um, hey, a round of applause for Jack congratulations. Jack. So you want to make sure that you enter. We uh, we got a new giveaway every week. You know that we're going to get something. The uh, URL is thisweekend.promojam.com, PT9 week three. Now, what was the big difference? Is that URL last week was PT9 week two. <laughs> so now this week it's PT9 week three. So again, the URL, uh, thisweekend.promojam. You can see the stuff up on the screen. Uh, make sure you enter thisweekend.promojam.com, PT9, week three, walk through that. We got about three more of these to give away, I think. We're giving away five, and then we got some special stuff after that. So, uh, thanks for entering. Make sure we'll get the stuff out to you. Dave, let's um, say goodbye. I don't want to. Okay, <laughs> then let's just sit. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll all say goodbye. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for being with us once again. And thanks for, uh, man, the, the questions and the support we're getting on Facebook is just just incredible. Really, really incredible. You, know, you can't underestimate the power of our audience and how that's responded and yeah. how we watch our metrics. So your comments are really helpful. Hit that like, hit that subscription on YouTube, and 
Well, one quick so thing before I leave, I'm, I'm real proud of you guys. There's, there's other opportunities for engineers and upcoming engineers to discuss what they're doing. And a lot of those other places, you don't feel comfortable because people always make fun of you or slam, and there's always one person trying to show off, and he's never made a record. But, man, you guys have been really great. You're helping out the new guys. You're not trying to act like, like, like you know, jerks that know more than you think you do. And, and I'm real proud of all you guys. It, 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 it embodies the essence of what Pensada's Place is about. Just no egos, no, uh, nothing other than just wanting to share what we've learned. And I appreciate you keeping that vibe going on the internet when we're, when we're not on the air. Once again, um, check out Vintage King. They're really helping, helping, uh, helping us out a lot. Avid's really helping us out a lot. So I'll see you guys next week.